Gospel on November the 23rd, 2015, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When Jesus looked up, he saw some wealthy people putting their offerings into the treasury, and he noticed a poor widow putting in two small coins. He said, I tell you truly, this poor widow put in more than all the rest, for those others have all made offerings from their surplus wealth, but she, from her poverty, has offered her whole livelihood. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us remain with just this short fragment of the Gospel of Luke. Um, the whole week, this week, which is the remaining week of the ordinary time, is enlightened and guided by the feast that we celebrated yesterday, Jesus Christ, the King of the Universe. And we will be required, reminded, and demanded and exhorted to allow ourselves to act like true subjects, subjects of our King. It is very difficult nowadays to think in terms of a true kingdom. Perhaps if we could go back a hundred or a hundred, I mean, a thousand or twelve hundred years, then we would know that the subjects of the king were basically their, the, his property. And they could confide in him that he would provide for them. Today, as we expect the second coming, the coming in glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are reminding, reminded of the contrast between those who absolutely trust our Lord and those who do not trust Him or that seem to trust Him but really do not. The scene of the Gospel develops inside the Temple of Jerusalem. The Lord is very near the treasury this contraption that was called gasophilaxio in Greek and, cert and that certainly was some sort of invention to exhort and to in incitate the wealthy to putting more coins and more coins for it certainly made quite a noise it made it so that it I could I would dare say I would dare say it almost created a competition among the wealthy to see who was able to procure or to produce the sound, the larger sound, the longer sound, because of the coins that he was depositing into the treasure. And the Lord, who happens to be God, is looking at that. And he is not fooled nor impressed. He is impressed by this poor widow that deposits only two small coins. I could say, I am almost certain that those coins didn't even make any sound. But yet the Lord says, this poor widow put in more than all the rest. Because the others made offerings from, the, from their surplus wealth. And she, in her poverty, offered her whole livelihood. There is a huge difference between those who confined so much in God that are able to give themselves because deeper and farther than just the money being put into the treasury what the poor widow is showing is her confidence in the hand of God that he will provide for her whereas the rich people had their confidence in their wealth so whatever there was a, surf, a surplus to be shared with the temple and, and supposedly God, they would share that surplus, but what was needed for them, what they um, thought that was necessary for them to conduct business, they did not put into the treasury. So it was only the surplus that the wealthy gave in. And that is a way also, even today, that we would act. We could be going to the Eucharist, having Holy Communion, even be reconciled, and then dedicate just one hour a week. Perhaps we could give some contribution or even do some apostolate that doesn't take too much time of my time. So
so that I am just like keeping an eye on it, keeping my my foot in the door so that it does not shut me off. But then the attitude of the poor widow is the attitude of a seminarian, of a religious person that gives his entire life up in order to gain Christ, in order to gain God. And many, especially of the religious people, are willing and able to give up their, their wealth, a project of life, a family, just to gain a foothold into heaven. And they are trusting God in a very different way. I would like to ask you, how do you and I presently are behaving with God? Are we just counting the beans? Are we being so picky that we don't want to give anything more than just the absolutely necessary? Then we are behaving like those wealthy donors that only give their surplus. But I could tell you that anyone that is willing to give up his own life, he will be rewarded immensely. Let us remember that passage of the Gospel where the Lord says, Whoever wishes to keep his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for, the sake, for my sake and the sake of the Gospel will gain it. It is a gift from God, especially our eternal life. And that is the life that we should be looking for. The life that is really worth keeping. Not this life that we are living in these years. Dear brothers, as we spend this week, I ask you, I exhort you, to look deeper into yourself and your relationship with God, and to trust in our King, to let ourselves be managed by Him, to ask Him every day, where do you want me to be today? What do you want me to do? Show me your way. And not to act grudgingly or greedily with the God. Just let yourself be led by the Holy Spirit today, tomorrow, and until we meet in heaven. Until then, God bless you all, brothers. <laughs>